Great, thank you very much, Char. Um, so I, I think I'm gonna kick things off. I'm just gonna give uh, so a quick, quick agenda of kind of what we wanted to go through. Uh, I'm just gonna give a, a very brief, very brief overview of what Firefly is, uh, what the project is, how it's used, and kind of the uh, a brief snapshot of the roadmap of what we're working on currently. And then uh, that will kind of segue into Peter talking about how identity works in uh, within Firefly. And uh, then hopefully from there, we could kind of open it up and, uh, and have discussion about it. So uh, my, my other disclaimer is that uh, before about a couple hours ago this morning, I didn't realize this was going to be a presentation. <laughs> I was thinking it was more of a conversation. So, um, so th there's my disclaimer. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I, I do have some slides to go through here and uh, we'll jump right in. So uh, just kind of want to give folks, if you're not familiar with the Firefly project, uh, like I said, a very brief overview of what it is. Uh, I could talk for a really long time about this, but I'm going to try to keep this short. So we describe Hyperledger Firefly as a super node. And it, it, we describe that as a, a complete stack for enterprises to build and scale secure Web3 applications. So uh, what, what does that mean? Well, that means Firefly is not a DLT. It, it sits a layer above the blockchain. And it is a, a platform that you can build Web3 blockchain powered apps on top of. So uh, what, what does that give you as, as a developer? What's the, the benefit? When you look at the landscape of open source projects, you know, there's a, a lot of projects down kind of at, the, at this low level of, uh, of, of blockchains, DLTs, uh, all these you know, tools for, for doing stuff on the blockchain. Now, that's great. Uh, there's, there's lots of, uh, you know, there's, there may be lots of stuff at the top layer too, you know, where you, you have your, your user interface and there's, there's lots of great open source frameworks for building flashy, cool web apps. But if you want to build an enterprise Web3 application, there's all kinds of things that sit in between those layers that you have to build. And one of the things, as Peter was saying, this is um, Firefly sort of came out of the journey of Kaleido. Uh, you know, at Kaleido, as we built more and more Web3 applications, we realized that, hey, that all these applications need it, the same or very similar set of plumbing and pipes and connections to, to different things uh, and messaging buses and uh, event management and all this stuff that sort of sits in between these layers that lets you build a, a really robust enterprise Web3 app that can scale and is secure and is ready for enterprise production. So that's that's what Hyperledger Firefly does. It's, it's meant to fill this gap to give you uh, a common platform with a, uh, an easy, concise set of APIs that you can build an application on. So, so it sits, like I said, a, a layer above the blockchain itself and uh, lets the developer focus on the thing that's really of ultimate value to their business, which is solving their business problem. So the developers can focus on the, the logic of their, of their business app. Uh, they don't have to spend time thinking about well, how do I actually get data from you know, this, this one piece of our network architecture over here, over to here? Firefly handles all those things, has connections for all those things. So what's in the box? Um, we can sort of think about Firefly in uh, kind of providing three major categories of, of things that allow you to build apps, flows, and digital assets. And I'll kind of break down what each of these are in just a minute. Uh, so so the, those are like the main sets of things that it lets you do and build. Uh, those are powered by the Firefly core. The Firefly core is uh, has an orchestration engine in it that is sort of the, the brain and the connector and the, the organizer for, for all of these different systems that it's connecting. And what are all those systems? Well, there's, there's obviously a blockchain node. There is a, a shared storage service. There is a, a private data bus for privately exchanging data. Uh, Firefly Core has its own database where it's keeping track of state of the network, of things on the chain, and also its own internal state as well. Um, all of this, of course, is uh, done with 
uh, security, you know, this, is, this is enterprise ready. So there's, you know, there's security running through all these layers. Uh, there's also a really robust set of tools we kind of have on the chart over here. Uh, there's a, an SDK for Node.js that's written in TypeScript, so it has great type definitions. There are more SDKs coming. Uh, that's the one that we have today readily available on npmjs.com. There is a command line interface that can be used to create a local development environment on your machine that will start all this stuff up and lets you play with it uh, with just a few commands. And obviously there's, there's a fantastic API for, for all of this stuff. Uh, there's a, a web UI, the Explorer, I forgot to mention here up at the top, uh, the Explorer is a, a fantastic user interface that lets you see what's going on inside Firefly. And, and all of this is designed in a uh, cloud native, modern distributed architecture uh, in mind. So it's, it's meant to run in Kubernetes. It has Prometheus monitoring built right in. And, uh, and, and it's great. So uh, let's kind of break down kind of these apps, flows, and digital assets and describe uh, a little bit more in detail what we mean on each of those. So uh, one of the really cool features that Firefly has is that it will let you build uh, HTTP APIs from smart contracts. So you can import a, a custom smart contract. Uh, if it's Ethereum, you could provide an Ethereum ABI and Firefly will generate on the fly an API for it. So it, it lets you um, sort of rapidly build uh, integrations and applications. It, it also um, stores information about, the, uh, about the, the API on the chain and could broadcast that to other parties as well. So other, you can inform other parties about uh, a certain contract that's on chain. And there's some, some really cool features there, including the ability to uh, subscribe to events being emitted by those contracts uh, to index those events and be able to query them and uh, get state out of the, the contract as well, all through Firefly's API. Um, Firefly is uh, one of the, the main use cases for it. And, and this is a, a use case that is, is growing. There's a lot of functionality being built into it right now is uh, to use it as a Web3 gateway. And what do we mean by that? So uh, for example, if an enterprise has, uh, they want to build a, an app powered by blockchain, uh, but they need to have a control point or a one point in their IT infrastructure that is, can communicate with a public chain, for instance, communicate outside the business network. That needs to be in a, in a very specific area of the network. Firefly can, can fill that role. So Firefly becomes the, the gateway to uh, the Web3 world in the same way that an internet gateway is a mechanism for uh, applications inside a network to reach out to systems outside of the private business network, uh, Firefly can act in the same role for the Web3 world. Uh, so, uh, and, and this can go both ways as well. So everything uh, coming to and from the blockchain goes through Firefly and to a, a Web3 app. Um, so, so this provides a, a lot of power for businesses. Uh, one of the other use cases or um, or sort of usage patterns, I should say. It's, it's, it's much broader than, than a specific use case, but it's, what we describe as a usage pattern is uh, for uh, consortiums or multi-party networks as we refer to them as sometimes. So, uh, and this was, this was really like one of the, the very first usage patterns that was built out robustly in Firefly. So a lot of the demos that you, if you've seen the demo already of Firefly, it was probably the, the consortium multi-party usage pattern demo where you have multiple organizations that are interacting with each other through the blockchain. They're broadcasting data throughout the whole organization, hashing it, pinning it to the blockchain. Uh, maybe they're privately sharing uh, more sensitive pieces of data directly between members. And they can perform transactions with, with custom smart contracts as well. And so Firefly allows these uh, consortiums of, of businesses to, to build a, a network powered by blockchain to perform business transactions with each other uh, all through the chain. Okay, and that, that third box was digital assets. So Firefly also comes out of the box with really robust uh, APIs for tokens, uh, which are one of the fundamental building blocks of a Web3 app, of a blockchain app. Uh, tokens could be uh, fungible or non-fungible. There are, are patterns for both in Firefly. And it, is, uh, it, it doesn't actually matter which specific token contract you use. It could be uh, a vanilla off the shelf, open Zeppelin ERC contract, whether that's uh, ERC20, ERC721, 
Uh, it could be a completely custom token contract. And uh, as long as it implements the ability to mint, transfer, and burn tokens, it uh, and, and Firefly also has the ability for uh, token approvals as well. There are first class APIs built right into Firefly. There's a fantastic dashboard that lets you inspect everything. This is a little screenshot of the, the Firefly Explorer, the Firefly UI that shows uh, kind of what's going on inside this particular token pool. Uh, but there's great support for tokens right out of the box, makes it super convenient. We've had a, a lot of people come to the project and, and try it out just so that they can actually learn about tokens because P Firefly provides just a really easy on-ramp to get up and started uh, running a system, being able to, to mint some tokens, transfer them, play around with an external wallet and just understand how different token contracts works. And it's, it's been really great. Okay, um, I, I'm gonna go through these next couple of slides uh, 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 maybe a little quicker, um, but wanted to just briefly touch on the, the Firefly core. And so the Firefly core is, uh, it, it's important, especially to, to the next part of the conversation as well, when we start talking about identity. So. Firefly core is, we, we, there's a picture of a brain in the middle of this diagram because we often refer to it as the brain of the system. And it's sort of the, uh, it has inside it an orchestration engine that is in charge of uh, making sure events are delivered in the correct order based on the ordering set by the blockchain so that the ordering is established by the chain. Uh, but then Firefly in the orchestration engine needs to uh, make sure that everything stays in that order as the the, the events are presented to the application, uh, as things are uh, put in the database, and uh, it, it it handles uh, it handles a lot of the heavy lifting of the the grunt work of what an application developer would normally need to build into their application to have a reliable uh, you know stateless Web three app. And the, the Firefly core orchestration engine takes a lot of that for them. So it's, it's coordinating between things that are on chain, uh, data that's being pinned to the chain or, or tokens or events that are, are coming off the chain. And, and it's also coordinating that with, with off-chain data as well, whether that's uh, documents that are stored in IPFS, whether that's private messages that are sent directly from node to node uh, and, and all kinds of things like that. So uh, I've touched on a couple of different places that the Firefly stores data. Uh, it has a, like I've said, it, ha it has a database that uh, Firefly stores network and chain state in. Uh, it also works with a, a shared storage system. Right now, the, the implementation for that out of the box is IPFS. And uh, it also has a, a private data exchange as well. Uh, Firefly has, uh, like I said, a lot of tools with it. Here's another screenshot of the, the Explorer from the dashboard. Uh, I've touched on uh, quite a few of these already, the, the CLI, the API, and the SDK, so I, I won't belabor the point, but it has a lot of tools, and, and they're, they're really great. Uh, they make using it easy and, uh, I, I think, an enjoyable experience for developers. Um, it's, it's all, like I said, cloud-ready, modern distributed architecture design. Um, one of the other really cool things about it, and it will talk more about plugins here in just a little bit, is that it's it, one of the points I haven't touched on is that it's a very pluggable architecture. So uh, not only is Firefly itself distributed into many microservices, the, the orchestration engine has a really robust plugin system that allows uh, the implementation for any of those services to be swapped out. So uh, if, if you know the, the out-of-the-box implementation of shared storage is IPFS, but if you have a specific need to uh, use a different shared storage mechanism, uh, maybe it's you know Amazon S3 or some other, uh, maybe it's some on-premise data storage system uh, that can easily be swapped out via a plugin to the Firefly core uh, to talk to a completely different storage service that sits outside of Firefly core. Um, so it's so it's both a microservice architecture and it's also a very pluggable architecture as well. Okay, so just a, a quick comment on kind of the, the roadmap of what we're working on, and uh, and then we'll segue into uh, the work on identity. Um, kind of we're working a lot right now on enhanced support for public blockchains, as well as multiple ledgers and blockchain connectors at the same time, and in different usage patterns at the same time. So I talked about kind of the, the gateway 
and the, the multi-party usage patterns, uh, allowing Firefly to, to operate in both of those modes at the same time uh, in different namespaces uh, with different sets of plugins. And uh, so, so all three of these active development uh, bullet points are, are very much related. So uh, I also commented on that, you know, there's, there's a lot of work going in right now to enhancing Firefly's Web3 gateway capabilities and uh, giving operators more control, more granularity of how their, uh, their, their Firefly node interacts with the rest of the blockchain world. Uh, coming up soon, uh, we're working on more samples, more SDKs, and it uh, looks like I had a duplicated bullet point. The uh, Web3 gateway was supposed to be on the left side. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, also, pluggable API security and pluggable identity management are, are coming up very soon. And uh, so those are, those are things that, that people are really excited about as well. And so speaking of pluggable identity management, I will end my, my little slideware talk here now, and I will turn it over to Peter to, to talk about that topic. That's, that's great. Um, thanks, Nico. So um, let me let me just share my screen um, a minute and just give you a feeling for what Firefly is firsthand. Um, so if you if you stand up Firefly, um, and I do encourage you to have a look at some of the recent demos, maybe we can send some some of those those through afterwards. You'll see what you get um, in about five minutes, whether you choose Fabric or a private Ethereum chain, you'll, um, or maybe even connecting to a remote public chain. You'll um, you'll get a stack on your on your laptop, which is running everything you need. It's running all of the Firefly components, um, which is a microservice architecture. Part of making it pluggable is allowing different components to be different languages. So it's um, it's running a bunch bunch of different different containers. Um, for you, including the blockchain, IPFS, um, uh, and, what, and, and like I say, you can you can pick your, pick your blockchain there, and also a bunch of tooling. Um, so you get a sandbox, um, which is a sort of an exerciser for blockchain constructs. Um, so being able to play with tokens, uh, create your Launch your own phone, your own token on your on your laptop. Transfer mint, um, mint and burn tokens. Um, interact with smart contracts uh, of any description on the blockchain itself. So you've got some custom fabric chain code. You've got a custom Solidity smart contract. Being able to generate a REST API for that um, and interact with it. Um, and and also um, Firefly helps you coordinate together. Um, the off-chain pipes that exist pretty universally um, across enterprise deployments of a, um, a business use case on blockchain, whether they're well organized between the, between the parties as part of a sort of multi-party application that everybody's running a copy of, and sort of the off-chain pipes are standardized between everybody who's building in that solution, or whether it's much more ad hoc. The reality is that blockchain isn't great for sensitive data um, going directly on the chain. So you need to coordinate off-chain transfer with on-chain. So that pattern, again, is all, all built into, into Firefly. Um, and you'll also find you get um, an explorer which, uh, as Nico showed a little bit, um, gives you a, a bit of a view into, um, into the, the system. So I'm going to expose there. Um, what, you, what you've done on, on, your, um, on your node lets you drill into all the different things that, that Firefly can do. And um, obviously, if you are going to be um, doing things like um, off-chain, coordinated transfer of data between different organizations. Uh, what that means is you need to know who you're exchanging data with. It's just, you know, don't need to tell this group that that's a, that's a reality of life in the blockchain space, that um, a, a hex string of an Ethereum address is not great for business to know who they're transacting with. So, so Firefly does um, come out of the box um, when you're using it in the multi-party system mode where you're assuming everybody else is running offline. And I think that's an important point because 
Fireflies of technology does not make that, decision, that assumption, but it does provide that as an option for you. Then it comes with a sort of built-in network map, a system of identity just out of the box inside of, inside of Firefly. So um, just before we uh, started talking, I sent, I sent a, a message that came from another party um, uh, in, the, in the system. I need to see who it, who it came from then um, I actually get to see the, um, the identity that came, um, that that message came in on. So if I open up the, the message here, we'll see that we represent identity in Firefly using the DID syntax. Um, and I, I want to put it that way because um, we, Firefly is itself, just like with every blockchain technology, not trying to be the full implementation of a core blockchain construct. Firefly is not a DLT. It lets you plug into Fabric, Ethereum, even there's Corda, Corda support there, um, uh, connect to all of those remote blockchains that you might be connecting to. Even things as varied as Bitcoin are, connect, are you know, fit into the pattern of Firefly. Um, off-chain pipes, well, maybe you're using, you know, just the open source mutual TLS connectivity peer-to-peer. -peer. Maybe you're using a queuing technology like RabbitMQ or NATS or, or, um, or Kafka um, or a JMS provider, right? All of that can, can plug in. So that was the reason for choosing DID to be the way that we represent an identity of something that you've received, in this particular case, a piece of broadcast data that was pinned to the blockchain with a blockchain transaction of the hash. As with all sensible solutions, the data itself didn't go onto the blockchain, the data itself, in this case, for broadcast, went into IPFS. But my Firefly node is telling me it's done verification that it's from this author. And, and what does that actually mean? Well, in this case, it's using the built-in identity system of the, of the multi-party system of Firefly. And that is the only option today. And I think that's a really interesting thing we can get to in a, in a minute or so when we sort of have a bit of discussion. Um, at the built-in identity system. And um, so there's a um, there's a, a you know a DID resolver that we've just picked of, of, of Firefly to say, look, this is the built-in resolver inside of inside of Firefly itself. Um, and if we go to the network map, you'll see that there are these sort of constructs like organizations, nodes, and custom identities, which I don't have um, any of, which are a um, which are a a simple um, built-in uh, with a sort of profile way of advertising your identity within the network, which is um, backed by performing a simple verification using a key. Um, and I don't have an example of it here, but if there was uh, a child identity, like I created a custom identity, then it wouldn't just be the identity that you would, um, you would have had to, the, the key that you're using yourself to prove um, that you have ownership of. There would also be a verification by whoever you're saying is the, is the next identity up the tree. So a very simple system, you know, a, a lot like a PKI system where there are some root identities in the system that are trusted because they just established themselves um, through sort of a gatekeeper construct, they came on board. And then a claim and verification system to generate other identities where you need one transaction on the blockchain from the parent um, to say they, they attest to your claim and you need the claim itself. And, you know, a pretty simple, simple solution. But what really makes this sort of interesting is with a fully pluggable architecture, why not have other resolvers, right? Why not have um, Firefly in much more sort of in that gateway mode where you're just connecting to ecosystems that exist? where some of the members are getting the acceleration of using a stack of technology like Firefly, other of the members you know, maybe built everything from scratch and really want to use the lowest level technologies and being able to join that community and participate in it using a sort of middleware stack that makes it much easier for you to connect your applications and core systems to it. Well, that would mean you'd need to work with whatever the identity system is of that group of participants. So that's why we chose the ID. We're not choosing DID because we want to be a self-sovereign identity provider. We're choosing DID because um, 
we want to be a accelerator for solutions regardless of what technology choices they've made in the blockchain space um, and that means that um, projects where there is a, a self-sovereign identity system or other identity system involved that's backed by DID being able to plug that in and say don't resolve this inside of Firefly with the multi-party system built-in thing resolve this using the plugin and the plugin doesn't need to be, you know, just because maybe Firefly Core is Go, it doesn't need to be rewritten in Go, right? That can be any existing system. If it's got APIs, if it conforms to the standard, it can be, it can be plugged, it can be plugged in. So sorry, I, I talked quite a bit there, but I really wanted to give that flavor of sort of what it is, but also what it isn't for this community, because um, I didn't want to give any impression that what we tried to do is, you know, that there's I think there's a great synergy with projects like Ares and, um, and Indie and Software, um, not, a, uh, not a contention with them. This is, this is about um, an accelerator um, that helps, particularly focused on enterprise, projects go faster in Web3. Um, it's not seeking to replace any of the technologies, whether that's the DLT layer or technologies like IPFS and private data transfer and self-sovereign identity systems.